you know, irrespective yeah. of what your job yeah. is, you need to add value. Yes. And if you're not adding value as a technologist to the business, yes. that technology is going to go waste. Yes. You know, as a creator, you want to make sure it's getting it's being used. So it, critical that business and technologists learn, you know, educate themselves. My book is one of the sources. Welcome to Tip Top. Grow up your business with metronomics. Join me, Shannon Burns Susco, and certified metronomics coach Jed Roberts as we talk to businesses, thought leaders, entrepreneurs, CEOs, and business team coaches who have all taken the journey to grow up their businesses to their tip top. We'll be sharing their strategies, systems, and stories on how you can grow up your company at the speed you want. If you're searching for your path to tip top and feel that your time is running out, then this podcast is for you. On today's episode, we are talking with Asha Saxena, a speaker, author, an innovative leader, entrepreneur. I'm going to add professor in there with an incredible track record of building successful technology companies over the past 30 years. Thank you for having me, Shannon. I'm really excited to talk about uh, the work I'm doing and the work you're doing and and also sharing our experiences and knowledge with the audience. Yes. I mean, we were sort of giggling uh, before the show about uh, how much uh, we can talk for a really long time. So we're going to take the listeners on a journey for sure, our audience on a journey. But let's start at the beginning. Maybe give us a bit about your background. You have a great background, very interesting. And the journey that led you to write The AI Factor, your latest book. Absolutely. Uh, you know, I'm a, just a math science uh, academia, a computer science engineer, an undergrad and grad and started my career really as a traditional programmer. Uh, climbed the ladder from there to be a project manager, engagement manager, and then starting my own businesses all around technology from a consulting firm to an e-commerce company to a healthcare software company, which was really a machine learning data model analytics company. And, you know, it, it was really satisfying because we were analyzing the patient data and really focusing on the healthcare, the quality of healthcare. Uh, which was a great utilization, a great use case for um, AI, which we call now data science, uh, analytics, and so on. But, you know, after building the companies, I was, um, I've been teaching at Columbia University for 15 years. Uh, and when you become a professor, you're like kind of always thinking in the format of a coursework, a syllabus. And I would go to the clients and I would think about all my 30 years of experience in a way that I could easily communicate and teach. And, and my thought during the pandemic was that, oh my God, life is so short. You know, people around me during the pandemic, I was losing, you know, uh, friends were losing their family members and so on. And my thought was, how can I combine my experience as an entrepreneur and as a uh, professor and bring the knowledge I have for the last 30 years and right. share it with the world in a way that they can understand. Remember, right. during the pandemic, we were collecting so much data. Everybody yes. was going online. Yes. And we, you know, with that amount of data, I knew that we could really make magic. We yeah. could really get insights. Yes. And so the book really was, was uh, a reason uh, for, for leaving a legacy, leave, sharing my knowledge of all that I learned during my career. And when you think about that, because that's amazing, right? To pull that all together in your book. It's an amazing book. The AI Factor will make sure that, you know, a listener's audience has the info for that book because it's a really attractive book in many ways. But when you sat down to write it, you know, uh, and to put it out there, what's the one thing you want the reader to walk away with? What's the outcome you're hoping for once they read that book? You know, the one thing which I, I, as a technologist, and, and Shannon, you are a technologist as well. Uh, as an engineer, as a technologist, we wa when we build something, we want people to use it. And the problem is when you're building, building, uh, you get so trapped into building something complex because that's the fun of building as an engineer. You're trying to make it really complex. You forget that what is the business value at the end when you build a technology? I think a lot of engineers 
kind of lose that track. And what I saw during my career, that a lot of businesses were trying to use technology, but the technology became so complex that they would shelf it and they would not use it. And so my goal was to really make technology easy to understand through this book and provide framework. So I've created this four-step framework that business and technologists can use. So they can use a common language to communicate with each other, to use a technology as powerful as AI to create growth within their business, to really focus on the value this technology can provide. So AI is not just to play, it's really to to get the, the, the essence out of what this technology can provide for businesses and really make our lives easier and create the growth that we want to create. So I have a I have a question on that, but I want to ask you one question before I dig in a little deeper. So AI is used all over the place out there. And a lot of people don't know truly what AI is or even what it can do for their business. Now, you know, that sounds sort of crazy because AI, you and I know with our technical backgrounds and education and experience, AI has been around for 40 plus years right? But it's hot right now and everybody is trending, but a lot of people don't know what it is. Can you just give a base, like just a baseline on, you know, what, what your definition is and we can talk more about, because there's different types of AI, you know, and just give, give the, give the audience a little insight. Absolutely. And I, and I think everybody knows the term AI, but really, truly what really it means. A lot of people probably get confused about that. Rightly so, what you said, in 1950s, the artificial intelligence term was coined. So even though we had artificial intelligence and the work being done, AI was not powerful because we didn't have the data. And before I talk about the data, let me talk about what AI is. Artificial intelligence, when you really think about the term, is when a machine can act like human. When a machine can think like a human, can problem solve like a human, can start predicting like a human, can start creating patterns. When you tell the machine this is oranges and these are apples, or this is cat and this is a dog, machine learns from the images, from the data you provide. And then once they have enough data, they can start predicting correctly. And that's why the big data became so critical for the knowledge. It's really the brain power, the food for the for the machine is the data. If you give a lot of food, they can now start seeing what the patterns are. But if you give a very small amount of data, then the machine might not get as smart. So the reason AI, even though it was formed in 1950s, needed that data, that revolution we had at one point. Uh, oh, or 2.0 or uh, Web3 really helped us make our model stronger. And that's what, you know, the AI revolution is all about, which helped the, this whole pandemic helped building the AI stronger. Yeah. And, you know, I loved, you know, how you explained AI very simply get, get people's heads around it. And the biggest thing is the thing that has hold us back, held us back, but it's still holding us back a little bit around the data. And I'm going to, I want to talk to you a little bit more about that, but I want to ask you uh, the the follow on question after your opening around AI factor. So, you know, tech, your, your background technology, my background technology, um, lots of people, can't talk technology. You you actually can talk on the business side and you can relate it over to the technology side. There's lots of people who only know technology and that is their genre, that is what they know. And then we have the business side. What's what's your recommendation or what have you seen out there when we're, you know, because AI is that, you know, overlap, but it's no different than, you know, I was sort of comparing the hype uh, back in the day to e-commerce. The e-commerce hike went, went off and really, when we looked under the hood, there was like, yeah, not as much as what everyone thought was going on yet, right? Some things had to catch up. What's what? How do you create the conversation within the organization when we know the technology teams are all very hyped on AI? They can see what needs to be done. The business side maybe knows they need it, but don't even know what questions to ask. You know, uh, it really boils down to education. You know, when we business usually leans on technologists and say, I'm just going to let the technology (laughs) feed me. Right. And the technology is like, 
business is doing business. I don't need to learn about business. I'm just going to do what I'm doing right. here. And right. so I think the number one thing in, in growth, in evolution is education. Yes. So I think it's critical for business leaders to learn about AI and technology and technologists to learn about business. And, you know, Shannon, you, you and I both have been technology, but we also have been business owners. So we understand the value. It's like it's about every dollar, you know, it's about cash flow. It's about are we making money or not to run and serve our community. Whatever community you're serving, it is so critical that you have the systems in place and operations in place. And you, So when you need these elements, but a lot of time when you're only doing technology, you don't worry about those things. You say, oh, the operations and the management will worry about that. And so it's really, really critical that you, it's important. That's why the book, you know, and, and I ended up launching the workbook after that because you can use the workbook to start making notes and say, how do I really communicate with business? Because now you need to learn about the value. Where is the value coming from? And I always say, you know, you can, you, no matter which room do you go in, you know, irrespective yeah. of what your job yeah. is, you need to add value. Yes. And if you're not adding value as a technologist to the business, yes. that technology is going to go waste. Yes. You know, as a creator, you want to make sure it's getting, it's being used. So it, critical that business and technologists learn, you know, educate themselves. My book is one of the sources. It's, you know, there's so much information right now out there that you can really invest. And I always say, in this day and age, Spend 10 minutes reading about AI so you know what's going on in the world. So, and it's just, you know, getting the start, creating a little bit more knowledge. Then you'll take the next step and the next step. And it's really what attracted me to how you approached this for business, right? And for the teams that are challenged to figure out, you know, what, what should we be doing or not doing? It has to add value to the business. Does it make sense? Can you talk a little bit about um, thinking about not only taking the first steps of education, but what are the other steps you recommend within your framework that, you know, leaders should be thinking about? You know, uh, so, you know, I, I truly believe that if you take the four easy steps, which I talk in the book, starting really by understanding your business. So uh, number one step is assessing your business. And I have this power quadrant I talk about is that really understand, am I, and it could be a functional area or it could be your entire business. Do we want to really invest in optimizing our business or do we want to be an innovator? Now, optimizers are the companies who are really think, saying, we're in this phase, we need to create efficiencies. We need to make sure that when we are doing sales, when we are you know, um, looking at our leads, our lead operations are done well, is efficient. Or if we are doing billing or we are doing finance, our financial systems are optimized. So you're trying to create efficiency. Or you're an innovator. You want to launch new products. You now want to understand what products do well, which markets do they do well. Are you collecting enough data to understand how to launch and be an innovator in your business? Or your extender. You want to just create market share. You know, you can acquire companies or, uh, you know, um, organically or inorganically uh, grow your business. And the last section, which I think is really important, which is a multiplier, where you say, I want to reinvent. I want to reinvent my own business. And I want to see how do I disrupt, you know? There are so many, and I, I'm going to pick on you because I, I'm so fascinated by the business model you have built. And, and you and I never spoke about that, but I'm fascinated. There's so many coaching companies, but you're the only coaching company which personalizes your clients on making sure that they're getting the service and their teams are getting their service. But also you use your technology to create the system so that they are not left behind on technology. And what you did, you created a multiplier company. You said, I'm going to reinvent the business model and try to bring technology as the powerhouse to your, your company. And the listeners who are running businesses can use that model to become a multiplier. So I, I always say start with number one. Step one is assessing your business where you are. It does, if you're an optimizer, it doesn't mean you cannot be an extender. But where, if you have limited resources, where would you get the maximum value? So that's the step one. Okay. So people are listening and they're like, how would we go about doing that? Like, should we sit down with our team? Should we, you know, what, what do you recommend? Because I know you work with teams. How, how do you do this with teams? You know, uh, people will say, 
uh, what is, how do I get started with AI? I say, start wherever you can start. But as an individual, you want to start with whatever tools you have. You can start with Midjourney or ChatGPT or, uh, uh, you know, any slides go, which is a you know, PowerPoint AI tool. You can start with whatever tools you have available and get knowledgeable. But when you're a CEO, when you're trying to build, apply AI in a company, you need to have a strategy, a strategy that you revisit, you come back to, and you make sure you validate that you're making the move. But you want to have a cohesive strategy for your organization so you can touch and check mark what you have completed and what you haven't and where can you continue growing and what will give you the maximum uh, value for the investment you're making in your business in this technology so you know I, and I, and I, what i what i say is that you need to learn and create that space where you go away from your work you know you need to get away from your day to day work to create this strategy because ai is going to become very, really critical and can give you a competitive edge it can get you a lead in the marketplace. And listen, everybody's using AI. So if you don't use it, you're going to be left behind. And, I, and, and I'm, I'm so proud. I'm so excited that we are doing this workshop in Phoenix, October 17th, you know, um, at Metronomics. And you can get a link. I'm sure, Sharon, Shannon, if you can share the we link with the audience. We will definitely share it. Yes. But well, I think that is the place you want to come with your senior leaders yeah. where you're away for a day, day and a half. Yeah. And you sit down, understand what AI is. Yes. Apply a simple framework, and yep. then build your use cases. You're going to walk away with a roadmap yes. of what you can, where you can apply. And the best part is, we don't leave you hanging. After the <laughs> workshop, there is a one month check in. Yes. And then we do quarterly check in, and you get into this community where you actually learn about AI on a regular basis. Yeah. And you come back with your cohort on a quarterly basis to share your successes and failures because yeah. listen, the path is not going to be easy. No, it's not going to be straight line as we know. And, and, you know, th this is what, um, you know, about two years ago, you know, we were deep into strategy with our clients and our coaches are deep into strategy. And, you know, this has been coming for a while. And the number one thing I was looking for myself, for my clients, for the community of metronomics was a framework that we could apply. One that was realistic to where we are in our business and one that would identify the sort of the hot areas that we could take advantage of aligned to our strategy and the ones that maybe we could, we could hold off on, but that we're going to continuously check in no different than strategy. We, we do strategy every day, week, month, quarter, year, metronomics. AI is a way to enhance that strategy. And it's now, you know, it's opened up because of the ability of the machines out there, the data out there and the pieces. Could you share, um, you've been working with companies for years and, and helping them understand their opportunity with AI within their business. Are you able to share maybe a, a case study, a real world example that you could share one that, you know, took the framework. I know you work with companies and then pulling it through to, you know, the success that they've had. Oh, absolutely. Oh my God. Um, you know, the first first step is that, you know, companies who are really taking advantage of this technology. And I see that there's a lot of space for education, healthcare, retail, uh, consumer product goods companies. You know, at, at the last summit, which you uh, held in Whistler, I was talking to a couple of CEOs who are in real estate. And they said the way we audit and uh, evaluate the investment in real estate, there's a whole... Uh, process that can be automated and we can use AI to optimize and be, you know, as I, I was talking about the quadrant, you can optimize the whole process. But um, some of the great examples, you know, one of the clients I work with is L'Oreal. And L'Oreal, uh, one of the brands of L'Oreal, Kiehl's uh, Makeup, they launched a large language model chatbot which means that this chatbot goes out into all their documentation and learns about the product and can talk to you, a consumer, about different products. So it's a great uh, use case about launching AI, generative AI, yes. in a real-world scenario where the chatbot can actually hold a conversation, not like, you know, the annoying chatbots yeah, which yeah, we used yeah. to have in the past. <laughs> We've all been experienced. And it's like, I don't want to talk to them. Yeah. But now the chatbot can give you different options, 
uh, it's a you know I went online to play with it as a consumer just to yes. user test it. Yes. And I was like, my skin is dry. What should I use? It's like, have you tried this? Or you know, yes. this is a new line. And what is your you know in this age group, this would be the best skincare. Right. right. So. The chatbot was talking to me like a real human with a lot of information. It wasn't like asking two questions and passing me to a live agent, but really holding a conversation with intelligent information. I have another really great uh, use case, which is an um, education company like Cyber Inc. And they launched these um, uh, educational videos. And they could, with the use help of AI, they could actually create an avatar and also multiple languages. So they could launch their courses in multiple languages pretty quickly. But if think about it, in the old days, we would get an artist and have a voiceover, you know, for all the different languages, but they could do it in multiple languages pretty quickly. So, I mean, I can go on and on with use, great use cases. Yeah. And so talk about a little bit of like a lot of businesses want those outcomes. You know, they want the tweaks, they want to either save time, make a, you know, a role in their organization better. They, there, there's so many reasons why people want to apply AI to their business. And there's so many places. What's the, what are the like three biggest challenges you have come across a business, businesses are up against to like get going? Like what, what, what do they face? What you probably see it all the time. You know, the first thing which I see is that a lot of different groups will want to apply AI and they're going segmented, you know, their own silos and they land up launching something and it doesn't talk to each other. So I think having a uh, having a uh, cohesive strategy is really important. And that's why I think I'm personally very excited about October 17th because of the workshop, because I think that is one of the biggest challenges. All, all these little use cases are popping up in all different uh, functional areas, but they're not really launching it or being successful because there's no complete cohesive strategy. Second, very important thing is the data. They don't know what data they need. So they're not collecting the right data. They don't understand what the clear objective is. They're not tying it all together. And then also, it's very important what you collect. Are you integrating all the data sets? Is it clean and you know uh, trustworthy? Uh, so the whole pieces of the data uh, privacy, quality, integration is important piece. And lastly, the culture. You know, it's really important that your organization is ready to start using this technology. And that's why I always say I had a, a, a friend who was a CEO. He's like, I don't need to get involved. I'll just send my team. And I said, no, because it starts from the top. You know, they said the company only grows as much as the CEO grows. So super important that the CEOs get involved. And, and this hands-on. Yeah, I love that you say that because, you know, there, there are always things when we're growing a business that we run into. And, and technology can help us, you know, be a huge multiplier in our business. But if the mindset isn't there, if the mindset of the leader, the CEO, and the leadership team isn't there, the company will struggle no matter what they're doing. And I love that you go to that that cultural foundation, because it's like the number one thing. And when we talked about putting this workshop together for the metronomics community, for, you know, coaches and their CEOs, it's about the mindset we need to be in to help actually look at the strategy on whole. I love that. Thank you for sharing those. And I'm sure a lot of listeners are nodding their heads and, and understanding those in so many ways. When you go, when when a when a company has their mindset, they're like, "Yeah, we've got it." They see the strategy. They see how this, you know, they've mapped out. And in our world, we use the swim lanes to map out the big moves we're going to make with our strategy. And we have a lot of clients who are mapping in some of the AI moves as some of their big moves. Once a company decides, like, we've got a roadmap. This is what we're going to do. What's the next thing that you see, that you coach, that you share with companies to actually now put it into play? Two-step process. First is that um, 
we have actually, after the workshop, we have a lab they go to and they get to see all the technology that's available. So they can actually engage with the technology and build a POC. We ask them to start small and create small wins. So I would say the very first step is you prioritize your use cases, which you'll do it in the workshop, and you understand where is the high value use case. And then you can try and see what is available, what technology is in available, what infrastructure I would need to start launching. The second step is having a community. And so that's why I think it's important that you stay together and continue touching base every quarter to say, see what's working, what's not working. So I would say the first step is to make sure you have a plan. Second step to understand what is available, what resources they would need to execute on that plan. And third is to measure and check whether they are actually delivering or not so that they can course correct. And then we provide an advisor. So the, the, the workshop, you'll be assigned an advisor, AI advisor, who would stay with you to make sure that you're on the right path. Yeah, amazing. Because I think, you know, one of the biggest things that, you know, we run across is like AI is here. You know, people are like, let's apply AI to our business as like a blanket, but I love what you just said is let's first assess where we are. Let's pick the area that we could actually make a step forward with. I know within Metronomics, the business you know that we're running today, even we did the exact same thing. We looked at the whole strategy. We looked at what what were the opportunities. We looked at you know sort of the the hottest one that could we had the resources we could deliver we could deliver upon in a reasonable amount of time. And there was value back to the business, both to our end users and to our team on the other side, our inside end, end users, right? So it was like a win, win, win for sure. But it was like, a pro like we absolutely followed that process. And the, the thing that I love is the support that's required you know, ongoing and the learning you can have from others from within the community because, you know, we don't want everyone making the same mistakes. We'd rather, yes, it's not a straight line. We make a mistake, but we share, oh, we tried this, but we actually had to do that. And then it will speed up, speed up actually how we implement and what we do. I have a question for you. And, you know, I get asked this question a few times. I'm definitely not an expert in this area other than, you know, the learning I've done. But how do you address the ethical considerations and the potential biases in AI, right? Within your framework, within your book, within your experience in working with companies. You know, it's such a such an important piece because, um, you know, when I was writing the book, uh, my one of my one of my chapters dedicated on that is that AI is great, the machine learning is great, but machine learns from the data you produce. Yes. And the data we have in the real yeah. world is biased. Yeah. So what yeah. happens is machine uh, laser focuses on that bias and exp exponentially enhances that bias for you. Yeah. So which is a problem. Uh, you know, the uh, Amazon uh, launched this a HR recruiter where they were looking for engineers and all, most of the engineers were men. So they started rejecting all the female resumes because they assume the machine assumed that right, the female right. engineers are not strong. <laughs> Same thing with Goldman Sachs and financial services company. The HR recruiter, which was the AI bot, looked at all the managing directors and they said, most men come from Ivy League and they're all men. And so they started rejecting resumes, which didn't look like that. So that's a huge, huge problem. And I think it's important. And that's why it's so important to practice responsible AI. And, you know, when you, you heard Elon Musk worrying about, oh, AI is going to become powerful, you want to make sure that the AI, which becomes our friend, not our enemy. We want to make sure that the AI, which we are building, is building, we're designing the world with a good design, you know, eth ethical design. And, and World Economic Forum had a, a really great uh, inclusive AI life cycle uh, methodology, which we'll touch in our work workshop as well, and talks about why it is important to look at the diverse data set, diverse ideas and opinions as you're building your models, because that is what will give you the right solution and build the right um, tools for you. What, what advice? You know, there's probably a lot of people listening. They might not have done their homework yet on AI. They might not have looked at it from within their business and they might be hesitant to adopt AI technologies for some of the reasons you talked about, but just 
you know, some of the very human reasons of they just don't know yet about AI. Like we have to learn, like with anything that's evolved in our lifetime. What what kind of advice could you give them? You know, I would say that the number one thing is start small. Start with chat GPT. Start with writing your emails and using AI to write your email. Or write your content on social media. Just use the AI. There's AI is available on social media now. I mean, it was funny. Yeah, I was on yeah. Meta and it, Meta has an AI and, yes. you know, uh, Instagram has an AI. Yes. Uh, LinkedIn has an AI. So AI is now so easily available. So the number one thing I would say is that jump on the bandwagon of the AI, you know, train and make sure that you're using AI in small little tidbits. See the power of AI and then think a little bigger for your organization and where can you start implementing within your organization. Well, that is a, that is great advice and probably a great way for us to close this off because the only way we're going to learn is if we just start trying to use it in 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 areas of our lives that aren't as risk you know uh, big risks for taking writing you know a social post or writing an email or trying chat gpt i mean that's the first thing i did i was like ah oh, this is awesome and chat gpt even the versions of that as we've you know as we've learned and grown with it it's like a full conversation now when you lose use the latest version i mean it's Oh my gosh, I'm all, I'm almost apologizing to it to Chad GBT for how I asked the question. Sorry about that. I'll ask it better next time. Oh, they're like, oh, thank you. Thank you, Shannon. You know, like and carry on. It's it's fantastic. Now, I know that you are quite passionate about AI. We are going to educate and work with our coaches and CEOs at Metronomics. We're so grateful for the opportunity to do that with you. Um, AI Factor, I'd strongly recommend all. If you haven't read it, if you're you know looking to learn more, pick that book up. It's a really nice way to explain everything Ash has put forward today in this podcast. I also would say pick up the workbook because it actually guides your your thinking as you're evolving what's happening around you. We're learning every day a little bit more about AI and it will guide your thinking, thinking about your business. It's a great, a great tool. Thank you for uh, sharing that. Thank you for publishing that. Now, the, the other thing that I wanna talk about is you're pretty passionate about women in technology. Can you tell us a little bit about that? And that we can close Absolutely. that off, but I, I cannot, you and I both with tech backgrounds, being women in technology, I cannot not bring that up before we close off. I am so glad that you brought that up because, you know, as I was writing the book during the pandemic and I realized that what, right, while I was writing this chapter about ethical and responsible AI, I realized that the biases are going to cause a lot of issues for our, our world if we don't really address it. And and the number one thing was the diversity. We don't have diversity of thoughts or our diversity in our leadership. We're going to it's going to be challenging. Uh, and and so that was really my my little effort, my small tiny bit of effort of creating this organization where women leaders take part who are in data and AI in building the strategy, in building the the direction, and bringing bringing the insights so that we can build a fair digital world with parity and equity. Yeah, so love it, it. it. You know, it was not that important. You know, like I felt when I was growing up, I was the only woman in the t- room yeah. full of men. In, I know, in, I was looking for you, but, but we went to different schools. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I was the only one in my school too. <laughs> exactly. So, so you know, and we just learned how to navigate that world. Yes. We learned and yes. we didn't really think twice about it. No. But I started thinking about it when I was writing this book and I was talking to my son and I said, oh my God, you know, this could cause a a lot of problems. Yes. And and then he said to me, mom, why don't you do something about it? And I was like, what can I do? I love it. I know. And I was like, I can't do anything about it. And then slowly I said, let me call people in the industry. And I started talking to people and then a group of women and men came together. We have allies in the group and who are saying that we care about building a yes. diverse world yes. with data and AI. Yeah. So we have a lot of programs in Wilda, which we call it Wilda, WLDA. Um, and we we make sure that organizations are, you know, putting the stake in the ground and educating and building conscious leadership 
especially in the field of data and AI. And and you do you're doing summits to you know raise raise the bar and awareness. Um, I know you have some coming up this fall, September, Actually, and November. November fifteenth. Yeah, the yes. 15 is our big annual summit. Yeah. Uh, well, the summit uh, where we actually bring all the thought leaders, uh, researchers, uh, we bring entrepreneurs, um, creators, uh, and, and people who are running large companies. So we actually, you'll get to hear about what's going on in the world of AI from large companies like L'Oreal, New York Stock Exchange, yeah. to entrepreneurs who are building new technologies and researchers on what they're doing. Yeah. So that's Amazing. happening in New York. New York, November 15th. And it's WLDA, right? WLDA. Love it. And you know, it's important to recognize, right, uh, yes. Shannon, to recognize yes. so the awards will be uh, at uh, a historical site, Bank of New York historical site oh, in downtown New York. And we're going to be uh, giving awards to the leaders in, in AI, men, uh, women, and corporations. Love it. Well, thank you so much. Congratulations on your book. Um, all the work you're doing out there for AI technology and, of course, this organization it will make a huge difference. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for tuning into this week's episode of Tip Top, brought to you by Metronomics. To find out more about Metronomics and how this proven 20 plus year old system will save you time and money as you grow up your business, visit metronomics.com. Don't forget to connect with myself and our fantastic team of coaches on LinkedIn. Share your thoughts on today's episode in the comments and suggest topics you'd like us to explore next time. You can also find Metronomics on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.